let's go through all the Viking accessories that come with the designer Epic. Now, before I get started on this, I just wanna show you what is going on on the screen. There was an update and I went ahead and clicked it. Now, here is a note. Right now, the machine is off, there's no lights, please. Make sure you always leave the machine on. Do not turn it off in the middle of an update. Now, before I, I went to this, I did have a choice of to do the update later. So keep that in mind. You don't have to run it when you're like, oh, I was just gonna sit down to sew. But keep in mind that you do need some time. It will work its way through, but just please don't turn it off. It's not, uh, it, I think you actually need to come visit your uh, Viking store if, if it doesn't update correctly and all the way through to its end entirety. So we're going to just take some time and do some of the videos that don't require me touching any of the screen. So what comes with this machine? Oh, let there be light. I love that. All right. Is actually a, um, a cover and case that will allow you to carry the machine with the handle. And it also helps protect the touch screen. So make sure that that um, doesn't get damaged. But keep in mind that if you are going to classes, it is a good idea to put by one of the roller cases they make one exactly to fit this machine and then that way everything stays safe when you're moving it around. You will also have a user's guide that is a short version. Now we'll link below this YouTube video to the 200 page uh, user's manual that you can print off or even just look on like an iPad or something. But this is more like a, the quick version of it. Remember a lot of your entire manual is on screen and we will make sure you know how to get to it and how to search in it. But this will kind of get be like that, get you started. But I would highly recommend that you print off that 200 page epic manual. A lot of people like manuals, so that is there for you to print. You also get the print off of the sampler, all the designs that are built into the machine and then the sewing, or I should say embroidery information that goes with it. And so lots and lots of designs, they always look better stitched out. So I hope you'll take some time to do some stitching. You'll also want to take a few minutes and go in, um, log on and to Viking, who's going to Viking.com slash register, register dash machine and get your machine registered. And then that way, if there's any questions of your updates or things that you might need along the way, you are completely covered. You will find in the accessory bag that comes with it, your uh, goodies, but I wanna show you where they actually go in the machine here. And before we get there, I wanna show you that there's also a stitch plate at the bottom. So this will just slide off to the side when you're ready to use it or switch it out. Uh, I have noticed that when I do switch it, I seem to put it back and I always have the one I need right at my fingertips. Now this one's the straight stitch throat plate and one thing I love about this straight stitch throat plate is that the machine knows when I put it on so it is censored and then that way when I take it off it knows that I can go back to sewing zigzag and then also when I have it on it won't let me break a needle at all. Oh, one other thing what I want to show you is in this machine right here, there is a small hole. You can barely see it right there. One of the feet is long and needs to sit in that foot hole holder, and that is the manual buttonhole foot. So when we get to that, we, we will show you. You also have all the room back here. So some of the things like your walking foot can fit back there. So walking foot and guides come with it. I actually have my own um, little pack of hoop clips back here. So they're close by and also some of the thread nets. So sometimes when I'm using metallic thread, I'll put a little thread net over it. And yes, I might have the metallic needle in and everything, but this has helped me just tame that metallic thread just a little bit more. If you've never done that, give it a try next time you're actually using metallic thread. Now you'll actually have two of these. These are little um, kind of spool bases and you can put those right on top. Usually you do need to take those off when you actually need to put the cover down. Uh, they will kind of sit down in that area. So sometimes I'll travel with one or two just up there in the top lid. But then when I cut, get to where I'm going, I can put that out. And then you're gonna wanna put your spool that you're using on there and then run it up to the first guide at the top here. Okay, so when we get to threading and winding the bobbin, we'll show you all those details. You do have a, I'm gonna just pull these out in random order here, the sensor buttonhole foot. So this does plug in on the back side, uh, right about here on the machine. So we can do that. Usually I put that in the back because there's just more room for it back there. Your embroidery foot, 
Okay, this is your sensor Q foot. Definitely the one you want to use when you embroider. You might like that up front, so it's a little bit more accessible. A spool cap, so if you do have a spool that you need to kind of hold down in place, do you have a handful of different sizes for those? Uh, still one of my favorite tools. It's called a multi-purpose tool. It will help you take your needle in and out so you can loosen it and not uh, lose it down inside the machine. Uh, it has a little flat side on that needle hole. So by putting the needle in and then lifting it up, it definitely will stay and not spin. It will go up where it needs to be. It's also two different heights. So if I'm going over a really thick area, I'll use that. And also when I'm sewing on buttons, if I want to have a little spacer, so my button has a little extra thread for it to button onto something, you will use this. It'll even come up on the picture of your screen to show you where to position it with buttons. So again, that's one I use quite a bit, so I'll leave it up front. I mentioned there is two guides, a left and a right guide that come with the walking foot, so they can also kind of fit back into that area. Um, little trick on the seam guide. <laughs> okay, so when you need to change the plate, this is the easiest thing to reach, and you can pop up a corner and change your plate. And so, it multi multi purpose <laughs> on that as well. You will get with your machine ten epic bobbins. They are taller, yay! So they hold more thread. So that's what this little guy's for. They can actually just start to clip in here. If you're winding them, this can actually come out and go with you to uh, be loaded up. Sometimes people will uh, keep a separate uh, set of bobbins for their bobbin thread for embroidery and then one for sewing. So again, nice that they give us lots of bobbins to get started with, but I guarantee you'll always want and need more. A pack of needles, so we'll go through a lot of needles with our machine, meaning different types of needles for different techniques. So again, you can keep those close and up front. We are gonna show you how to clean and take care of this machine. I didn't say clean and oil, because we actually don't act um, do any oiling, but cleaning is key. And there is also a seam ripper that comes with this machine. So we'll keep those, uh, I'm gonna keep those up front. <laughs> we also have a, magnetic screwdriver. This came out when the Epic came out, and it definitely is nice because as you just gently twist it, it will attach itself to the screw. See, I'm not even holding on to it, and it will help you uh, easily tighten, loosen, or take your needle in and out too. And it's also nice because it gives you something to grip onto. Again, a tool I use quite a bit when I'm stitching. Okay, down to the last couple feet, and then we'll get ready for threading. Looks like my update's working, so we won't touch it or bother it. This is the extra foot that goes onto the walking foot. Notice it is a single hole. It's marked for quarter inch. It's perfect for doing, say, bindings, or even if you're just quarter inch stitching on flannels or something stretchy, it's not bad to put that walking foot on. And these just clip on and off on the bottom. They're almost magnetic, so they can easily do that. Okay, the next foot I have in my hand is the S foot. Notice how wide it is. When you're doing stitches that are sideways motion, they, the machine will tell us which of these feet to put on. But that is also a wider foot, so there's some wider openings off to the side. And it's a great place to also store the E foot, which is our zipper foot. So you can actually attach it to the left or to the right side. Excellent. We have a quarter inch foot that comes with this machine. And a little trick with quarter inch, feet is if you put the straight stitch throat plate on, it will make sure the needle stays centered and you don't accidentally pick, say, a zigzag or decorative stitch and break your needle. So that's something I do always do. Uh, foot J is an overlock foot, so even though I have a serger, I don't always have it threaded with the right color, so having an overlock foot is very handy to have close by. Blind hem foot is foot D. And that way, we'll do blind hems here too. Uh, here's that manual buttonhole foot I said was a little longer. So we'll take its little end point and put it upside down into the holder that has that particular um, hole there. Uh, H is your non-stick foot. So that allows you to stitch on things like vinyl or leather or things that are sticky. And so nice that it's also still included. And our foot is like a a free motion foot, it's like a, it will hover and, over your fabric as you're stitching or a darning foot. I have a couple other uh, spool uh, aids, you might say, if you have a really wide base of a spool, you can slide this up so it doesn't wiggle or flop around. I'm gonna put those back here. And uh, a few more thread nets. Oh, these little guys, people always ask me, what are these? These are, they're actually stickers and they are non-slip 
on one side. So when you peel the sticker off, we can turn, for example, our zipper foot into a non-stick foot by applying the coating and onto the underneath side. So that's a super easy one. So you might not need those very much. Just keep those handy and know that you have them when you need them. So that's kind of the overview of our accessories that come with the machine. And you'll notice that they all fit together as soon as I move that little seam guide so it will fit. And again, when you slide this off, you have the free arm of the machine or when you're doing embroidery. But most of the time, I like sewing with that extra table space.